you write me, booker at bookerlawfirm.com. Your question ends up on the show. Bring you to the court of my public opinion. We're not going to look at this as legal advice because I don't represent you. And I may not have all of the facts that I need. However, I'm going to do the best job that I can with what I have. Without further ado, let's get it crack a lacking. Order in the court. Oh, this is a messy commoner. Hi, guys. How are you doing? You know it's your favorite girl. <laughs> okay. Attorney Allie Booker. You already know what time it is. And we're ready for order in the court. Order in the court, honey. Order. Without further ado, let's get this case crack a lacking. They wrote me and they said, honey, this is a juicy one. It's a messy commoner. It happens a lot. Listen. Listen. My ex living in another state has called and video visitation with our six-year-old child for 10 to 30 minutes a week. Despite complying with the court order by answering or returning calls within an hour, my child often ends the calls before 10 minutes, expressing disinterest in speaking further. I ensure privacy during these calls by leaving the room once they begin. However, my ex has filed a motion for contempt, falsely accusing me of being present during the calls, interfering, and failing to ensure the calls last at least 10 minutes. Although I have call logs as proof of, proof of compliance, I can't demonstrate my absence during the calls or my non-interference. The accusation also includes not enforcing the minimum call duration. This places me in a contradictory position regarding the presence of these calls because my ex is unwilling to discuss this outside of court. So how do I respond to these accusations? And I'm sorry I'm leaning over because I'm, I'm reading on my computer. Because that was a long one. I'm not going to print that one out. That was a lot. Okay, let me tell you what happens. Order the court, okay? Ma'am, this is happening in another state, okay? Your order's from another state. And I can tell it is because, honey, we're here in Texas. We don't do that mess. And this is why, okay? We don't have time for you coming up in here telling me a three-year-old hung the phone up. We don't have time for it, okay? You want me coming in our court complaining about a two-year-old pressing the red button and pressing Coco Mel on YouTube instead, okay? This is why we don't do video and telephone calls with people, okay? This is why if you wanna see your children, you should really see them in person. I'm not saying that you should, you, you should not use video, okay, as well as phone calls to supplement that. But I will say this, she did not tell us how old this child was, but obviously this child is of the age where the child can hang up and they can say they don't wanna talk. And I'm sorry, but honey, banging the gavel, I can tell you a bunch of children don't want to talk on the phone to their damn parents. They just don't. I'm sorry about this, but they don't, okay? And a lot of the times, parents get a bad rap because these kids do not want to talk on the phone to the other parents, okay? And I would offer up to you that if you were a child, you wouldn't want to talk on the phone to your parent either. You don't really give a shit about what your parent's doing <laughs> when you're a kid. You don't care. Is the money there? Can I go out? Did you buy me the things that I need to make it? That's pretty much what kids care about. That's why they, they cannot raise themselves and they're ready to move along, okay? That's why keeping a child vested by having physical contact is a good thing to do. Now, I don't know if this other parent is in the military, deployed or otherwise, but they're threatening to take this woman to court. And ma'am, you would have proof that you're not interfering with these phone calls. Guess what the proof would be? The video. So you shouldn't be in the room. I don't understand how you claim that the video is not going to tell whether you're in the room or not. I want you to understand that we're not dumb. And we're in an age where many trials and many hearings are done via video. Okay? So we definitely understand when a person's doing this, this, or that, and looking from somewhere to get the question answered when you're talking to them. Okay? And if that's what you're doing on that video, ma'am, and he has that recorded, then you're going to have an issue. Okay? You're going to have a problem. Because we can tell people are not dumb. So if you are coaching the child, then you should stop. I hope you are leaving the room. If not, he's got little to no evidence. But he really needs to come and see this child. That doesn't let you off the hook. Okay? Please make sure that you're not interfering with those phone calls. Okay? Please and assure ensure that you're not interfering with those phone calls because if you are there's gonna be a problem if you're not and the kid's just getting off the phone that'll be very easy to see okay because if the child's over the age of 12 in this state the court can automatically speak to that child about whatever okay 
especially when it's dealing with custody issues such as this. So really that's when you can speak with a child. And courts have an uncanny way with speaking to the child and finding out the truth regardless of whether the child wants to lie because kids just aren't that smart, okay? Although they try to be. And ma'am, I'm gonna repeat this. You need to make sure that you're not interfering with those phone calls and you need to make sure that you are trying to foster a good relationship between the child and the parent, okay? If not, it can backfire. Next case. Because I'm gonna tell you one thing that stands out at me and I'm gonna let it go. Although I have call logs of proof of compliance, watch this. I can't demonstrate my absence during the calls or my non-interference. If you have the call logs, if the call logs prove that you that the child's getting the right amount of time, then what is going to be his argument? He won't have an argument because he cannot file a case where he's arguing that you're by telephone, but he can see you. There's no other way that he can prove that. So he would never be able to meet his burden, ma'am. You would not need to bring any controverting evidence. All you would need to do is ask him what proof he has that you interfere with the phone calls if they weren't via video. And he'll have to say what proof he has. And it's not about you being in the room. He would have had to hear you say goodbye or something and hang the phone up. Or he would have to have proof. Or the child would have to testify and say you're hanging it up. So don't worry. Next case. <coughs> Video is going to be a problem if you're on there coaching a child. Time I made that call. I'm locked up and facing charges well, Who gon' fight these cases for me? I called with the law firm They got the job done They were right there for me For more information, contact the Booker Law Firm at 713-292-2225